Hello everybody, I'm extremely honored to welcome world-renowned trainer Laurie Stevens to give a brief introduction to canine fitness training. Laurie is not only a professional dog trainer and animal behavior consultant, but she's also a canine fitness instructor, an animal massage practitioner, and a senior Tellington T-Touch training practitioner. You can find out more about her on her website, Seattle ttouch.com. Laurie is also the creator of the balance harness. I don't know if you guys know about this harness, but it's actually a harness I use with one of my dogs, my Border Collie Halo, and I find it extremely useful because it has a clip on the front and the back, and when he wears his little service dog jacket, I love clipping it to the front, and it's a very useful harness for me and my training. And you guys know that I don't sponsor products, so that's just a personal a uh, bit of information from me. So anyway, <laughs> uh, on to the video on canine fitness. Hello everyone. I'm here to give you a short intro to canine fitness and hopefully pique your interest in learning more. The first thing we want to think about when doing canine fitness is creating a safe learning environment for our dogs. This involves a lot of things. But the first is to make sure you're working on a non-slip flooring surface. So you can use a yoga mat or um, rubber flooring or some carpeting is not slippery. Uh, if you're working outside, you just want to make sure the ground is semi-level. And uh, if you're working on grass, you want to make sure it's dry. Uh, you also want to use appropriate equipment and you want to put that equipment away unless it's being used. And I'll talk more about equipment later. And you want your, to really make sure the environment's set up for success. So not too many distractions. You want to have your treats ready, your marker ready if you're using a clicker or a verbal. Um, there's plenty of information on, on that in Kiko Puck channel. So when teaching fitness behaviors, I like to start on the ground. The ground is a perfectly reasonable place to start. It's not sexy like some of the fitness equipment is, but it's uh, the safest place to start. And there's a lot you can do on the ground. For example, if your dog or goat is standing, you can ask for a paw, like a, like a high five or a shake. And um, for your dog to do that, they have to balance on the other three legs. And that is hard work. After you've worked on the ground for a bit, we can introduce stable equipment, for example, a platform or a book. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. If you're gonna work on unstable equipment, like an inflatable, then you probably wanna take a class in canine fitness that's given by a certified canine fitness trainer or work privately with a professional who's certified in canine fitness training. You want to see that your learner is engaged, focused, and in alignment. And what I mean by in alignment is if your dog steps up on a platform, for example, you don't want the back legs to suddenly get really wide or the front legs to get wide or really narrow. You want the alignment to stay pretty consistent with where it is when your dog is normally standing. And if your dog stands, with their legs really wide, any dog really, you want to get your dog okayed for fitness by a veterinarian. And uh, like I said, you want to have your treats and clicker ready and you want to keep your session short. So I want to say a word about puppies and aging dogs. So with puppies, as they're growing, their growth plates are open and uh, they're open until the puppy reaches 12 to 18 months of age. So during this period, when the growth plates are open, in order to keep from damaging their bones and joints, we just want to prevent them from jumping from height, for example, from beds, even pretty low beds, sofas, cars, that sort of thing. So best to keep your puppy on, on the ground or little jumps from the ground and not from high up. There's plenty to do for puppies. They can experience balance. They can experience that on your bed. Um, just 
put them down off the bed onto the floor. They can walk across all sorts of different surfaces like uh, hardwood floors, tiles, carpeting, cement, um, anything that uh, you can put different things down, for example, bubble wrap, or just let them experience the environment, let them experience life. Because in all those experiences, they're learning and building confidence for what's ahead. With aging dogs, we want to keep them moving. They might appear like as if they want to sleep all the time, but they don't. <laughs> they want to engage with you and moving helps them engage with you. And fitness helps them uh, stay strong throughout their entire lives. And what happens with aging dogs is they often lose hind end strength. So keeping their hind ends um, strong is super important for quality of life for aging dogs. So, when we do fitness or movement type exercises, we want to make sure our dog chooses to engage. We want to see that joy on their face. We want to progress slowly and incrementally. Just like when you go to the gym, we don't start you off uh, bench pressing 300 pounds. We start you off where you are, which is at a, as a beginner and gradually building and probably never getting to 300 pounds. We want to mark and reinforce movement or fitness behaviors you want to happen as approximations along the way to the final behavior. And we always want to keep safety in mind. I'm just going to mention a few of the benefits of fitness exercises or movement exercises. Keep in mind, you always want to check with your veterinarian first. Fitness exercises strengthen muscle. They improve flexibility, alignment, and posture. They can minimize the risk of injury. They can improve balance and stability. They can improve confidence and behavior. They build stamina. They increase body awareness and they improve gait and movement. I'm just gonna tell you about one simple exercise and that's platform work. Well, it can get complicated, but what I'm gonna tell you about is the simple part. You always want to start with stable platforms. So a book or two books or a short platform, maybe one that's made for canine fitness. You want to introduce your dog to all equipment slowly, making sure that you mark and reinforce any action interactions with that equipment. And you want to watch your dog for proper alignment, like I said earlier, and after your session, put equipment away. I like to teach dogs first thing, how to do a touch or target my fingers or my hand. That way I can use that. For example, if this is a platform, I can um, use my hand or two fingers as a target and invite the dog or goat up onto the platform. Yes, goats do platform work. <laughs> Um, so there's a, a video in Kiko Pup for how to teach this. So this is just a really nice way to invite your dog to do canine fitness. Okay. So if you have a small dog, for example, a Chihuahua, you might start with, um, a book that's half an inch or an inch tall. If you, um, have, a, a very a much larger dog, maybe even a, a Great Dane, then you can start at three inches, maybe four. Um, you want to make sure that you buy some anti-slip material. This is super cheap. It's rubber shelving material, anti-slip material. And um, you want to you can cut it up and wrap whatever piece of equipment you're going to use or place it on top so the dog's um, paws don't slip on the book, especially on book covers or on the platform. So there's <clears throat> two behaviors I teach first, and that is targeting the platform with two front paws and standing on the platform or two books to build uh, in building some duration with all four feet up. So standing, which is really a hard behavior. So um, I'm gonna use my phone since it has a non-slip surface rubber on the back of it. 
So I'm, I'm adhering to safety. And I'm going to invite, you'll just have to pretend that I've got my fingers there to invite the goat up. And so here's the ground. And I'm just going to invite the goat to put two front feet up. And, um, and that's where I will mark and reinforce. The minute my dog steps up, I'll mark and reinforce. And note that if your dog's front feet are up, there's a little bit more weight on the hind end. And this is nice for aging dogs and for any dog, really, that's beginning fitness work. And you just, again, want to look for the legs to not go wide when you step up in the front or the back. Okay. For standing on a platform, you wouldn't be able to use this short one because then the hind legs would have to come in really close and the back would really flex like that or roach. So you want to use a long enough platform or you want to use two books to invite your dog up. So you just want to make, make sure both the books have anti-slip material on it and they're far enough apart that your dog can stand on the platform or two books and the hind legs are directly under the hips without widening. So you, the platform needs to be wide enough and it needs to be long enough and the dog's back should be nice and flat on top, nice and long. Um, and the front feet need to be in alignment. And you would start with a duration of something like five to 10 seconds. And gradually over a couple of weeks, you can work up to 30 seconds. So that's a brief intro to platform work. And I hope this piqued your interest enough in canine fitness and movement that you'll want to learn more. And thank you so much. Don't forget to check out the description below for more information on Laurie Stevens and canine fitness. And also you can check out her upcoming events, which have links so you can find out more information. See you later.